Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it's you don't have to. You might be wondering why I asked you to stay after in this classroom scenario I suddenly decided to make up. Well, it's your show intros. They're appalling. Look at how standard, short, and run-of-the-mill they are. These are the openings to your shows. You can't have them be this ordinary. This will not do at all. Your assignment is to find better nostalgic openings for me to review. The intro is one of the most important parts of any show. It establishes the tone, style, and even story of what you're about to see. So, you and I are gonna look over some of the most memorable ones to see if they work or not. I expect this assignment on my desk the very next day. It is now the very next day. I sit very still. What do you have for me? Hmm. Hmm. Let's go over this together, shall we? Ah, the 80s fantasy that asked the question, I'm straight, right? If I like He-Man, that, that still makes me straight, right? What? If I like She-Ra, that makes me gay? How do these stereotypes make any sense? Whatever your preference, He-Man needed an intro to get you invested fast. And I did a pretty good job of it. Just look at the first epic thing you saw. After that. And the masters of the universe! Yeah, now that's some epic shit right there! Although, I've always wanted to ask this, am I the only one that feels like the narrator sounds like Dr. Zoiberg? And the masters of the universe! And the masters of the universe, why not? It starts off with Adam introducing himself and his battle cat, Cringer. I am Adam, Prince of Eternia and defender of the secrets of Castle Grayskull. And I'm his friend Jesus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the power of Grayskull! We don't really explain why I did or said that. I was just going through my holding aloft my magic sword and saying by the power of Grayskull phase. It just happened to contain fabulous secret powers. Suddenly, I became more naked and people thought I was a different person. Time to blow up this damn cat! Oh, uh, it does that, apparently. Uh, cool. And I became He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe! Not sure why he punched the person he was telling the story to. I became He-Man, what you call my mother? Die, asshole! Boy, Lou Scheimer's credit kinda kills the buzz, doesn't it? Let's take this time, kids, to acknowledge you executive produced this show. Yeah. Let's also take time, kids, to acknowledge the production director. Yeah. Oh, all right, here's some more bullshit. Together, we defend Castle Grayskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. In hindsight, he probably should live there. It does look like his face is plastered all over it. He actually lives in Castle Leatherbar. We should probably trade. He-Man eventually got a popular spin-off called Sneera, I mean Shira, with a very similar introduction. I am Adora, He-Man's twin sister. I am stoned out of my mind, which is why I'm so uncomfortably close to you. Fabulous secrets were revealed to me the day I held aloft my sword and said, For the honor of Grayskull! Yeah, He-Man got power, I got honor. It's kind of the consolation prize. Actually, I haven't established who He-Man is, what Grayskull is, why I have the honor of it, or the connection it has to the kingdom I just said I was from. But I have a goddamn unicorn! Holy shit! Yeah, how many battle cats do you see on merchandise everywhere? Nowhere! I don't see a battle cat! I got a unicorn, bitch! Bitch, I got a unicorn! On top of that, I got top billing. He-Man has to share his title with the Masters of the Universe. I have to share my title with more me. That's me co-starring me. Even Lou Scheimer doesn't get credit until the end. Keep your power and your miscast at Dolph Lundgren. I got the real honor here! Why'd I make her British? We even have rainbow color characters because... We're not afraid to hide our pride over here! You're so deep in the closet, you're tap dancing with R. Kelly! <laughs> Overall, these are kind of vague and weird, but they still manage to have a silly epic feel to them. I'm giving these intros an 85. Now it's time for cake! Hey, paisanos! It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! It's pretty sad when you have to say this is a better interpretation of Mario Brothers than the Mario Brothers movie. Especially when it opens with a Mario rap. With the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. Ah uh, yeah, we let this happen. The funny thing is, both this and the movie open up with the exact same Mario music to make you think you're gonna see something decent. Oh good, this is gonna 
be something great with the Mario Brothers. Immediately lost. You can practically see the look in Mario's eyes when the rap starts, as if to say, Oh no, it's this kind of show. Gotta love that choreography too. Everyone do the drunk uncle shuffling to the next bar step. Get used to those flagpoles we'll never see on the show. Here's another line I never understand. Hanging with the plumbers, you'll be hooked on the brothers to the bridge. Did he say tell the French? To the bridge. We gotta get those European ratings up. And if they find this funny, they'll find us funny. Tell the French. Hmm, cropping's a little off, guys. Oh, I mean, it's a warp zone. It's a syndication from public access. Luigi doesn't even have the energy to run all the way. He stops just before the end. As if to say, the cash is checked, right? I can't renege on this. Mario actually had two other spin-offs with slightly different openings. One was Super Mario Bros. 3. It is a legend no one will forget. Yes, they'll remember it so much they'll forget there was never a second one. And I know what you're thinking, that one didn't count because it was a dream, but you know what, we're putting a three at the end of this one, so where to go? Where to go? And why are we numbering our legends? This is really weird! King Koopa is back with the greatest danger ever known, his Koopa Kids. That's right! He found someone to bang him. I won't name names, but Fiona was on the rebound after Shrek 4, and royal child support does pay well. Using their new superpowers, the Super Mario Brothers rescued Princess Toadstool and beat back the evil Koopa family. <sighs> Spoilers. Yeah, they just kind of gave away how every episode ends. Not they'll try to stop them, but they did stop them. The Super Mario Brothers rescued Princess Toadstool. I read the script and I don't care. Anything with a Mario name on it you'll think is great. Yeah, I cut to that on purpose. Fight me, dickholes! I'll get those plumbers! They also had another spin-off with Super Mario World. This intro is focused on the Italian plumbers from Brooklyn, only now they're in prehistoric times. So naturally, the music should be Jamaican. Super Mario World, it's a blast from the past. I swear Yoshi has breasts for a second. He has breasts? Is he going through the same sex change as Birdo, or is that just how we fed baby Mario? Ew! Super Mario World. Gotta admire the creative choice to belch world every time. Super Mario World. Super Mario World. Sorry, I was stuffing down a lot of product placement. Some of it had to come up. Mario and Luigi are doing what they can. Yoshi and the princess are giving them a hand. And by giving a hand, we mean running away like cowards and or being generally useless. Hey, you probably wouldn't do much either if your world of mushrooms unexplainably turned into dinosaurs, cavemen, and phallic gumdrops. Connection! Super Mario World, it's a blast from the past. Still, these intros are entertaining, despite them being obvious, awkward game advertisements from beginning to end. I'm giving this one a 72. This is 29 Acacia Road. You can already tell this is a British show. It's gray, boring, it's opening exciting words are an address. But don't worry, they spice it up with some fruit. And this is Eric, the schoolboy who leads an amazing double life. For when Eric eats a banana, an amazing transformation occurs. This is really the most exciting thing you can come up with, Britain? An amazing transformation occurs. He gets his daily dose of potassium. Eric is Banana Man. Brought to you by the European Fruit Union to make bananas cool. Are they cool yet? Are bananas cool yet? Bananas are cool. Okay, so despite this being a very simple opening, it does ask a lot of concerning questions. First of all, was he always into bananas before he discovered this power? He has a pillow, an alarm clock, even a framed picture. A framed picture of a banana! How friggin' lucky would that be if he was Banana Man without him even knowing it? Also, why the hell is he swimming through space? Stop that! You can't swim in space, you friggin' buffoon! This is why you're Banana Man! Even Super Ted is making fun of you! No, 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 this is short, ridiculous, weird, I'm only giving it a 49. With a rotten fruit sticker. You better give me something better, Britain! I'm listening. Castle Dracula, home for many centuries to a dreadful dynasty of vicious vampire ducks. What? The Counts of Dracula! Okay, 
Okay, it's silly, but this guy says this dialogue like he's been waiting all his life to explain this mythos. I think he actually believes this is a thing. This does not suffice, however, for they may be brought back to life by means of a secret rite that can be performed once a century when the moon is in- I don't think Castlevania took itself this seriously! It creates what looks like the duck formerly known as Prince, as it takes, I guess, a more fitting turn as a pop song starts going with some kinda loopy lyrics. In the heart of Transylvania, in the Vampire Hall of Fame, yeah! The Vampire Hall of Fame, yeah? Like, comma, yeah? In the Vampire Hall of Fame, yeah! We were desperate for a rhyme! We didn't have very much time! We were working on a studio's dime! Hey, <laughs> count Duckula! <laughs> I just love how even the main character in the title is like, I don't know what they're smoking either, folks. Duckula. I don't know. It gets even more weird in the end credits as the song is interrupted with random clips. If you're feeling all you kind of could be your man of Duckula. You know, if you want to be more comically strange, you have to go with more random clips. I mean, really random. Like, if you're feeling I always win, Jack. All you kind of I'm your huckleberry. Actually, these are kind of fun. Let's try another one. If your knees go, Provasic. And your teeth go, Kill the Batman. Maybe you bumped into, Dracula. You can put anything in there. It's kind of amazing. If you saw it up, Plastics. Oh, you're a little, Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Certain you run into, Dracula. Try some at home. I want to see what we come up with. Overall, it's super ridiculous, but it's super inventive too, with a great style, artwork, and balls to the wall narration. I'm giving this intro a 94. Duckula. Count Duckula. Spider Man's gone through a lot of shows over the years, but by far, one of the most head scratching is Spider Man and his amazing friends. And the intro certainly reflects that. Just look at the first shot. Whoa, I'm tripping spider balls, man! Listen to this narration. They clearly just went with the first take. Spider-Man and his amazing friends! The way he says it, it's like he's referring to... Look, Susie made Spider-Man brownies. What an amazing friend! And these amazing friends are as follows. Iceman and Firestar! That's it. Two of the lesser X-Men that nobody associates with Spider-Man at all. Iceman and Firestar. Maybe they did something in the comics. I don't know. You're not going to look it up. Boy, you thought McGuire's face was derpy. Yeah, featuring them in their IKEA showroom isn't helping. Why are there two beds in the living room anyway? And where does Iceman sleep? Is that his bed? Did he make that for himself? Hey, you think Bruce Banner has a picture of Spider-Man at his house? None of this makes sense! But that monster from the opening of Scooby-Doo appears and they turn their living room into blinking lights. The architect must have had fun with that blueprint. You want me to do what? Suck your mother. Shit, I froze myself. I have two minutes to live. Wow, murderers. Whether by freezing you solid or burning you alive, you will feel the wrath of Spider-Man and his merciless friends. Even Doctor Doom's fashionable maxi dress can't compete with the slaughtering power of their intro. Okay, okay, this still has more dignity then. But it still needed a lot more updates to represent the time period it was made. I am giving this one a 31. Spider-Man and his amazing friends. My hunch. Hell yeah, this was a great cartoon with a great cartoon opening. The real Ghostbusters, suck it copyright, starts with the ghost in the logo dancing down the street. At first you're wondering why you'd be afraid of him, but then... Oh my god, he's gonna French me. You were a sex offender when you were alive! The logo flashes and Janine gets the call alerting the guys. I'm just gonna leave what Ray was doing under Egon's waist to mystery. That is an awfully big smile though. Slimer sexually harasses Janine, and they're on their way to stop an army of ghosts with the incredible strategy of standing in one spot, not moving, so they can be easily blasted. I always like how the singer sounds like he's mid-orgasm whenever he says the word call. Who you gonna call? Who 
you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Who you gonna call? Yeah. This show sadly produced a spin-off called Slimer and the Real Ghostbusters, which focused more on the Snot Goblin, leading to a more cartoony style, but still delivering a pretty creative opening. Yeah, does the Zool Dog really need to be in the same continuity as that mutant tiny tune in Pizza the Hut? No, it does not. Regardless, these openings are still pretty good, with great animation, great speed, and of course, a great song. I'm giving this a 98. Okay, problem number one. There would never be a Dungeons and Dragons ride. A Dungeons and Dragons ride! Now you can experience the magic of sitting in your basement arguing who gets laid less. I, I always won that argument. Who's this creep, by the way? It's a little old to be there, isn't he? Maybe he's the living version of that ghost that tries to tongue you in the Ghostbusters intro. I don't like this! Whoa! Oh. Where are we? Look out! Um, how many riders did this happen to? I mean, it's a long line outside that ride. Did all of them get met with this experience? There's just a warning outside that says, Warning, we're not responsible if your child randomly enters a life-destroying dimension. Must be at least this high to ride. Look out! I love this wizard who's supposed to be their guardian, but he just looks at him like, eh, sucks to be them. Just throw him in the pile of other carnival riders that came here. Fear not, ranger. He does give him weapons, which he could have used himself, but it makes sense to put small children's lives in danger over his. Magician, thief, cavalier, and pull dancer. Acrobat. Okay, sure. <laughs> Well, he wasn't much of a villain. His first move was bad aim with a pie splutting sound effect. Who was that? That was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master. We both had cruel parents giving us names to ruin our lives. Your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Now let me introduce you to our Wayans brother. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't grabbing me. The animation is rushed, the story is dumb, and I definitely wouldn't put together this is one of the longest running RPGs of all time. I give this opening a 22. Dungeons and Dragons! Oh man, this one's a rush. I don't know if the show was any good, but the intro was a lot of fun. The song tells you everything you need to know. Super fighting robot! Well, I'm brought up to speed. Fighting robot, Mega Man. Doesn't the fact that he's Mega already make him super? I don't think that needs to be emphasized. And not only do we get to see Mega Man naked, but he's damn scary naked. Where the hell was that designed for the Terminator? Mega Man. This intro is fast as hell throwing everything at you. Sparks, explosions, angry birds. There should be a death toll to this opening. How many people do you think died in those cities? <laughs> Did she have a vacuum for an arm? Maybe she's the daughter of Mega Maid. They both have the word Mega in it. Kind annuity. He lit that dude on fire! Not only lit, but disintegrated. There isn't even a grain of ash left! Murder Man and Mega Maid and his merciless friends! Finally, Proto Man shows up, and it looks like it's gonna be a big finish, but it ends a little awkwardly. Boy, for all that buildup, you think the final strike would be a little bit more epic. Oh, oh hold on, on. Okay, I almost got okay, let me just get turned around okay, here. Yeah, okay, here die. Still, this intro is pretty awesome. Great animation, fun song, gets you super hyped. I'm giving this intro a 95. sure are taking their time with the credits on this one. I hope it's building up to something good. One, two, three, four. Instantly sold. The last Instantly confused. I guess these kids find a dinosaur egg with a live dinosaur in it. So, what do they do? Put them in a rock band, of course! That's what Dr. Grant would want. 
Somehow I feel like these two species wouldn't mix well. Look at the way he licks his tongue at that couple. It cuts away just before he eats their faces. They don't really go into much detail in the backstory. In fact, the whole thing just looks like an 80s ad for dinosaur cookies. Wait, how can you be more than a friend with a dinosaur? If you're friends, what's really after that? Oh my god! I know I keep dwelling on sex in this episode, but what else could it mean? What is going on here when he makes this face? You dirty dino! A picture is upside down. Yeah, I, I can deal with a dinosaur being in an 80s band with a bunch of kids, but that picture is upside down! Boo! Yeah, that looks pretty cool until you put neon pink Denver above it with him giving the loudest wink. You should get that looked at. It's definitely a time capsule of, well, a time capsule. But it is bright and colorful and for the time even has some impressive layering effects. I guess it worked for what it is. I give it a 70. Here you go, one of the greatest openings of all time from one of the greatest shows of all time. It starts off with the Warner Brothers logo turning into a police blimp. Those very practical ones the police use all the time. We see two criminals about to rob the bank bank and they blow it up. You know, it just hit me. Why did they blow it up? If they already robbed it, why draw attention? If they didn't rob it, the money's up in smoke. This must be the work of a uh, man. We cut to the Batmobile represented by a still painted foreground against an animated background. It's usually the other way around. And he helps the police chase down the villains. How the hell did they get up there so fast? Police were right behind them and then suddenly they're on top of a building. What was in that bank? Gummy berry juice? They of course come across the Dark Knight as we all ask the classic question, what is that white dot on his lip? And why doesn't it appear in later seasons? He knocks the guns out of their hands, and we come across the one bit of animation I always thought was a little weird. He always moved like a hand puppet there. I know he's ninja-like, but I'm expecting a snake tongue to go with that move. He leaves the criminals for the cops, as our title character is so well-known, a title's not even needed for the show. <sighs> Though I will admit, as satisfying as that intro is, don't you kind of want to see him get hit by lightning? We all thought it! Don't act like you didn't! This opening is so good, so artistically pleasing, so musically driven, you don't even notice all the little details I was bringing up earlier. This is one of the best looking intros ever, and to this day, there's never been anything like it. They did a few other intros in the future, but it was mostly clips with some clever editing and nothing on the scale of this. It gets better and better every time I see it. What can I say? It's amazing. This is an easy 100%. I suppose that's enough for today, but if you'd like me to continue, let me know. Leave a comment below and tell me if this is a segment you'd like to see more of. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and if you'll excuse me, there's a certain theme month I have to get ready for. <laughs> Oh, sorry, we have to update the calendars around here.